Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It is good to see you guys as usual. So, <clears throat> it is now October basically. It's the 30th of September today. But I decided I was going to do a creepy video because I haven't done one in a minute. So, yeah. So, I am going to talk about the movie that is based on a true story or based on true events whatever a haunting in connecticut so let's go ahead and jump right into this video making me stronger, making me stronger. okay so Haunting in Connecticut is a 2009 horror film um, based on true events and apparently a true story and these events happened apparently uh, but then again it's a very controversial case because they couldn't prove it and a lot of people like denied that this house was ever haunted so yeah i don't know it's just really controversial but i found it really interesting and i found it terrifying so i figured i would cover it on my channel so this case is about the, Sn the snitaker family i think that's how you say it um there they were a family of um, the mom, Nate, her name was Carmen, the dad, his name's Alan, and their four children, Philip, Bradley, AJ, Alan, known as Alan Jr., and their, um, daughter Jennifer. And then some, in some stories, the, jo the daughter Jennifer was not in the picture, and then in some stories, there is a daughter that they, they did have a daughter, but in most of the stories about this place there was a daughter and her name was Jennifer so this family lived in a place that was far away from the hospital and they needed to be closer to the hospital because their son Philip their eldest son um, he had Hodgkin's lymphoma which is a cancer of the immune system so he was always sick and he was just horror like just felt horrible and they needed to get him to the hospital and back like in a faster way because the mother thought the mother Carmen she thought that the the hard travel and all of that would put like would kill him before the cancer would so she was like you know we need to move somewhere closer we need to move like now <laughs> because you know she was worried about her son that's her son so um and the dad was um working out of the home apparently when all this was going on like the hauntings and stuff he apparently was in new york for work so um there's a whole documentary about it on youtube um because they there was a documentary about it on tv and you know all the tv shows you can find them on youtube now <laughs> nowadays but anyways so this family found a home on june 9th 2008 and they moved into 208 meredith avenue i think i'm saying that right i think that is how it was said the street address <laughs> um but the family that lives in um lives there now they changed the address everything because they were tired of people saying that their house was haunted when in fact it wasn't haunted is what they said so anyways they move into this house and as soon as they move into this place like well they were told or they said that they were never told of the history of this place so a lot of people say they are lying about that that they were told about everything and that's why the price was so low for this house and you know Carmen the mom she was like you know the price was so low so that's why we moved there we didn't realize why it was so low but apparently they were informed of why it was so low 
so um, they move in and all of a sudden like as soon as they move in Philip the eldest son ke keeps coming up to his mom and saying this house is evil we need to move out we need to move out we need to leave this house is evil like we need to get out of here and she just you know <laughs> she was like whatever like you know, she didn't think anything about it at first. She just knew he was sick and thought he was probably depressed and stuff like that. So, she just kind of ignored it. Um, then, I think the kids were playing around downstairs. And they find some terrifying things. They find toe tags. They find um, all the things that you would find in a morgue the tables that you put the bodies on just horrible terrifying things that you would think even if a person is moving to the, into the house and does know the history you would think that the people would still clean up the place and at least get this nasty equipment out of this house that is just disgusting but come to find out they're living in a place that was a funeral home so you know, that, you know, gives the mom, like, an unsettling feeling just because she knows it's a, it used to be a funeral home, but she didn't feel like, oh, it's haunted or anything like that. So, she just blocks off the morgue area of the basement, and she turns the eldest son, Philip, his room, she puts it downstairs because it was the only room that had a bathroom. Um, and he needed to be near a bathroom because he was always getting sick and he was throwing up a lot. So the mom wanted him near a bathroom so he could get to the bathroom as fast as possible. Um, but she also didn't like the fact that he was down there because it was, she felt like it was a constant reminder of death and, um, you know, if if I found out my house was a funeral home before I moved in, I'd be like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't care if I'm homeless when I move out of here. I'm done. But, I mean, I do realize she has she had kids and everything. But I'd be like, peace out, Girl Scout. I'm out. But, anyways, so he began to sign Philip. He began to hear his name being repeated over and over and over and he um one night he came upstairs and he's like why is someone repeating my name over and over and she was like you know i'm on the phone with your dad it's probably you hear your dad the air vents are thin it's probably what you're hearing um and he was like but dad would not be repeating my name over and over and over like that just wouldn't be happening so he goes back, back downstairs or whatever then he starts to see this figure in his room and the way they describe it or that he described it it was absolutely terrifying um something out of a horror film <laughs> which is why they made it a horror film um so he's seen a guy that had dark long hair like kind of covered his face he was super skinny um i think he had a long black beard um and like red eyes red like glowing eyes and like so he was like a demon or whatever <clears throat> and he would tell him to do scary things and stuff like that and he would tell his mom that he's seen the sky and she thought that the medicines that he was on were, were just making him see things and have visions or whatever so she talked to the doctor about it and the doctor said there's no way that the medicines that he's on for his cancer would be making him see things like it's cancer medicine it's not psychi it's like it's not psychiatry medicine it's like it's not medicines that affect your brain it's medicines that affect your body so he shouldn't be saying anything so then she's like okay like you know she's starting to get a little bit creeped out then she notices like that there's crucifixes hung over, over like every doorway and then she starts to notice that they are disappearing like one by one so the first one that disappears i think was the one that was above the basement and um it's just so terrifying and so the boys like you know the other little boys they were downstairs together and they um saw 
they said they went up to their mom and they said you know the house is leaking blood like there's blood oozing down the walls and the mom just got mad at them for being in the morgue she didn't really listen to them she thought they were just you know joking around that it was a joke so she didn't listen until one day she was mopping her kitchen and she's mopping and everything that she's mop like all the the water that she was mopping with it all turns to blood and so she blinks her eyes a bunch of times like you know blinking a bunch of times to try and get this this to go away like she's like terrified she has no idea why she why she's seeing blood and she, it's blood all over the floor everything so she's freaking out and it won't go away like she keeps blinking and it's not going away so then finally she leaves the room and comes back and it's gone it's back to water so that's absolutely terrifying um and then she starts to notice that more of the crucifixes are disappearing like they're all disappearing and then she goes down um to philip's room and she sees that he's been writing in a journal and in this journal she decides to read it and in this journal she sees that he has been writing absolutely perfectly like he his he doesn't mess up at all whatever everything he's written is not messed up it's perfectly written and the scary thing about this is he has dyslexia so there's no like severe case of dyslexia so there's no way he couldn't have he could have writ wrote this with without help so she goes and asks him about this she's like how did you write this and it's also scary things like he's writing about like abuse that happened to the bodies of the people that were in the funeral home that were in the morgue like sexual abuse and um just abuse of the corpses that were there which is oh it gives me the chills oh so scary but she asks him about it and he says oh the man that i see in my bedroom <laughs> that's who helped me write it <laughs> and she's like okay like that's when she's like like that's terrifying you know and i think um someone had walked downstairs or whatever and got had a brick thrown at them or something i don't know just terrifying things happened at this house so they called ed and lorraine warren to come check out this house and in my halloween series because you know in october i'm going to be talking about a lot of scary cases and stuff and i'm also going to be talking about ed and lorraine warren and some of their cases that they um went to and i'm also going to be talking about the ed and lorraine warren occult museum because i found that i found that like really interesting that they made a museum and they have all these things these haunted items that but um ed and lorraine warren came and um you know they automatically sensed that, that they didn't tell them anything or whatever but they said they automatically sensed that the bodies there were being abused and like stuff had happened like bad stuff had happened there and just like a sense of dread and stuff like that and they said that the place that place was haunted and they said that the movie um they said that the real life case was more terrifying than the movie so there's that <laughs> um that's kind of scary because um i haven't seen the movie i just seen the previews and it already freaked me out that's scary um but anyway so they came in and they were wanting to do an exorcism of the house or whatever but in order to do that you have to get the priest's approval of the catholic church they have to out like rule out anything that could be you know like if it they have to rule out all signs that it could be anything else like other than a haunting or you know evil spirits because you know if scary things if you're scared if spirits are scaring you then 10 out of 10 it's not a good spirit because a good spirit would not want to scare you an angel 
would never want to scare you. They want to give you sense of protection and stuff like that. So, yeah, I can't imagine, like, living in this house. And, like, also the fact that everyone was like, they're making this up. That story's fake, blah, blah, blah. Because, and also other things, um, let their, her niece move in with them because they had space and stuff. And she was going through a lot. Her parents were going through a divorce. Hard times, so she moved in with them. And her and Carmen both were sexually abused by ghosts. A ghost, they saw a hand go up the niece's shirt, like just straight go up her shirt. And just, just terrifying things happened in this place. And so people, the reason people say it's fake is because they went so public with it and they told everyone about it and they're like yeah this is fake because if it was real they would you know not want to make money off of it and tell everyone about this blah 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 because they were saying you know their son was sick so they probably just needed the money for their sick son so you know everyone wanted to say that it was a lie that this was not true blah 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 um but honestly to think you know people are telling you that what you're going through is not real this is not happening that would be really irritating as well to know for a fact that this is happening that you're seeing it with your own eyes but people are telling you this isn't real you're a liar blah 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 so yeah they um in they ended up um sending philip to a mental facility after he attacked his cousin and um they diagnosed him with schizophrenia, but he was actually misdiagnosed. He did not have schizophrenia. Once he got out of the house, they realized it wasn't schizophrenia. It was the house. And um, so they moved houses, of course, and um, they, after they moved, they were better. Everything was fine. They did do an exorcism of the house, and they said it was successful and that it killed off whatever demons or anything bad that was in that house that it killed them off. Um, but that's a story. There's there's more to it. I mean, that's not all. But I tried to cover just like the bases of the story, the main main things about it. So I think that 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 like story is terrifying in the movie scene. I want to watch it, but it's not on Netflix and it's not on Hulu, so kind of screwed because I'm broke <laughs> but um yeah it's terrifying and I thought you guys would want to hear about it so if you guys um enjoy me talking about um movies that are based on true stories comment down below and tell me if you like it and I will do some more um of these type of videos I already plan on doing it um throughout the month of Halloween to show you some scary stories um, but yeah that's the story of a haunting in Connecticut um, like I said some people don't believe it and some people do and whatever it is I kind of am leaning more towards it is real because Ed and Lorraine Warren they went on so many cases and they experienced so many scary things I just don't see them lying about a case you know I don't I just don't see them doing that um because you know they have like proved that like some of the like the cases that they go on are real you know so I just I want to believe them um but I don't know you know I wasn't there and to think about any of that stuff to happen ever is terrifying so kind of don't want to believe that it's real but yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up and um let me know in the comments down below what you want to see this month of halloween this halloween month this spooky month tell me what you want to see 
so I can do some spooky videos for you guys. I got my spooky hair and everything. I just feel like everyone's told me they're like, your hair is perfect for like the Halloween season. I'm like, yes, um, that's what I was going for. So thank you. Um, but yeah, I love you guys and comment below what you want to see next. Um, that was my kind of opinions and stuff on the haunting in Connecticut case. You guys can comment down below what you guys think. But yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed and um, subscribe to my channel if you are not already. And hit the notification bell down below to uh, be notified every time I upload a video. Love you guys. See you in the next video. Bye.